Thank you. Uh, I would like to ask you to write uh, your name, your organization, country, and your email in the chat so we know where you're coming from and uh, what is your link to e-participation. So uh, our topic for today, um, there is uh, a clear gap uh, uh, when young people using full potential of digital technologies and uh, so to use it to access information on their civic rights and uh, also to participate on decision-making process. So what we will learn today, we will learn how to support young people to use digital tools for active civic participation and also uh, how to promote active citizenship through civic education and uh, active online participation of youth role models. And the input will be from Katya and Amy from Nexus Institute. They will present a new project, it's called Action. And uh, they are dealing with uh, how to support young people to use digital tools for active civic participation. So this Action project is Erasmus Plus project so it's promoting active citizenship and uh, they will also uh, in the second part of the presentation they will present the two modular training program it's um, digipack and uh, mona so i will just uh, stop sharing now and uh, give the floor to um, katya and amy Okay, hey, hello and thank you. My name is Katja. I will start the presentation. Um, I will present the Erasmus Plus project action. Um, it's about promoting active citizenship through civic education and active online participation of youth role models. So we, so just a moment. So in the first um, step, I will introduce you to the Erasmus Plus project in general, and we'll talk about action and our first steps in the project. And then my colleague, Amy, which she will present the two modular training programs we have already developed uh, called DigiPack and MOLA. Yes. So uh, first, uh, some sentences about action. The project is being implemented in Bulgaria. In Germany, we are the uh, coordinator institu uh, institute. Greece, North, North Macedonia, so Marice is also part of the action uh, project. And then we have also dissemination partner from Belgium. We are Erasmus Plus project, and we started in uh, 2021. And um, we, the project will end in 2024. So we are in the middle of the project in this moment. So why is action necessary? Um, and there, there's an increasing digitization of societies and widespread use of the internet, particularly among young people. And I think there's also an increase due to the pandemic uh, within the last years. And however, less than 20% of the young people use the digital technologies for civic engagement and political participation. And Action aims to close this gap in use of digital technologies. We would like to strengthen digital competences and also civic education. And we would like to empower the youth between 14 and 25 years in a range of social contacts and learning environments. So for example, some um, schools uh, in Germany, will, we will um, do this in, in secondary schools, but also in other informal settings. And we would like to, to uh, target a particularly a socially disadvantaged group to become active digital citizens. Our project goals are um, to develop two modular training curricula that uh, we have already done. Uh, Amy will present some details about that. Uh, then um, organize competence building workshops for use in formal and informal learning environments in, in these four countries. And then uh, accompany uh, use in their e-participation experience. So we will also do this piloting and roll out through multiplicators, country workshops, but also EU dissemination conferences like this today. 
in the first uh, step in the first year we did a desk research and analysis um, we were looking for some literatures about the topic and on theoretical models and common definitions for the three key thematics areas. They are digital citizenship, health literacy, and also media literacy. And then we were also analyzing existing training materials and interventions in these three areas of competence because our aim was to um, to look for already existing activities that we can combine in a new um, context of our project aim. So we don't uh, develop new, new uh, training materials, we use already existing materials. And then um, with all this uh, knowledge, we developed uh, two modular training programs. Uh, Nexus developed uh, the active citizenship and participation in digital space and our Bulgarian partner uh, has it uh, developed the model of opinion leaders activation called MOLA. We uh, use some definitions uh, or uh, digital competence areas of these three domains. Um, they are based on um, the Council of Europe's model of digital citizenships. Um, these are being online, well being online, and it's my right. So being online is about, in general, access and inclusion, media and information literacy. Well being online is about ethics and empathy and health and well being, and it's my right. It's uh, about active participation and rights and responsibilities. And then we combine these domains with uh, the cognitive domains of Bloom's taxonomy. That's a little bit older, it's from 1956, but um, we think it's, uh, we, it's also up to date, uh, especially if you combine it with, with these domains. And we have the level one, uh, remember and understand. So this is raise awareness, increase understanding and recognition. Then the level two, apply and analyze. So to develop skills and increase competences. And the level three, evaluate and create. So in the next step, Amy will present you some details about our training programs. Yes, um, so as Katya already said, um, we have these two different training programs and they have some differences in the target groups they're aimed at and in their thematic focus. So DigiPack, um, the training program developed by Nexus, um, was developed to be implemented in formal learning settings predominantly. Um, so mainly secondary schools, um, and with children and adolescents from ages 14 to 18, with teachers as the instructors. Um, and the main focus is on digital and dem democratic competences and enabling the young people and the participants to actively take part in their community and participate in broader society as well. Um, it's also a flexible training program, so it can be implemented in different learning settings as well, but this is the main context for which it was um, designed. Um, and MOLA, on the other hand, which was developed by our Bulgarian partner Hezed, um, was developed with informal community-based education settings in mind. Hezed works a lot with Roma communities in uh, Bulgaria, so that's kind of the background this training pro, um, program also grew out of and um, yeah young adults instead of um, adolescents um, are the main target group with community and or social workers as the trainers and the focus is on training the digital competences of not just a group of young people but particularly young leaders within the um, targeted social community. Um, and yeah, I will be going into more detail about this kind of approach in the next slides. But yeah, the thematic focus is also not just um, democratic competences in general, but particularly um, health literacy. So the aim is for these trained young leaders to then um, go on and improve the health literacy in their social groups. Um, next slide, please. Oh. One moment, please. Uh. 
does not work anymore. So I, I stop sharing and then I try again. Okay, thank you. So. So. I will do it this way. Maybe that works better. Okay. So uh, thank you, Hotja. Um, a little bit more information about DigiPack. So um, DigiPack stands for Digital Participation and Active Citizenship. And um, the whole program consists of three separate modules, module A, module B, and module C, which are each comprised of around four to six different activities. And like Katja said, these activities have not been developed from scratch by us, but they have been compiled and selected from existing materials. Um, and then adapted to meet our particular goals. And um, the whole thing has, was designed as a three day workshop. So one module for each day, but um, there are many options to adjust the training program to the particular learning context. Um, and also um, conduct the workshop online or offline. Yes, uh, next slide please. So, and the three modules also build up on each other. Module A is about interacting online in general. And um, yeah, there's um, an introduction to the program and of getting to know the other participants, um, activities that are focused on establishing basic rules of interaction during the workshop and yeah, exploring themes of just being and interacting online um, together. Um, Module B is focused on living in a democracy, and that's also the title of the module. And um, yeah, the main themes of this module are digital citizenship, democracy, and central democratic processes and uh, principles. So there are games for, or activities focused on human rights or on electioneering and democratic debate. Yes. And then Module C kind of builds up on both the, both the digital focus and the democratic focus. And it's about finally encouraging and enabling the young people to become active themselves. First by kind of introducing them to the whole concept of youth participation and then introducing them to um, some digital tools with which they can actually become active. And one of them is open. Um, and the other is an app called Fire, which is um, about training young people's competences, particularly in if they're working in NGOs or groups that already have are, are active, politically active. Yes. So now Mola, which is Hazard's um, training program, is quite different in its approach. Um, it was, it's actually based on another good practice model um, called the popular opinion leader model, which um, was originally developed in the context of HIV prevention, in which um, the kind of underlying theory is that social change happens um, via influential people in particular groups who then spread certain information and can influence the attitudes of others in the group and their behaviors. And accordingly, um, this model is about identifying and finding opinion leaders in the particular target group who are then trained by the program um, and then go on to influence um, the health related behaviors of their friends using online tools. So through social media, for example. So it's like the do different steps. First, to empower um, opinion leaders to become critically aware online um, users, and then um, use the social networks of the opinion leaders to change um, the attitudes and behaviors in the community as a whole. And this is um, quite a lot longer program. So it was um, designed to be implemented over five months, but it can also be adapted flexibly to the demands of the context in which it's implemented. So this um, is just a quick visualization of the MOLA training program, which is um, yeah, separated into five phases. 
first the pre-implementation phase in which the target community is selected and opinion leaders are identified then the training of the opinion leaders in which they their own digital literacy is improved and they're empowered to become change makers in their community and the activation phase in which the opinion leaders become active themselves and create posts on social media in attempting to train and influence their community and spread what they've learned um, online which is supported by the trainers and then a final evaluation phase in which the progress is um, measured yes that was i hope that was um clear and you got a bit of an idea of what um, has happened so far. Now we're um, actually in our piloting phase. So um, the DigiPack program will be implemented at uh, two, hopefully three secondary schools, um, two in the last week of June and um, open uh, and Mola is already kicking off in Bulgaria. So yes. If you have any questions, then. Thank you so much, Katya and Amy. This was very interesting. And I must say that this project is um, very relevant for the situation nowadays. And uh, it's very needed um, to promote uh, um, active citizenship of uh, young people. So please, all questions uh, are welcome. Uh, you can post it um, live or uh, also post it in a chat. Um, so my first question uh, is how many young will you involve in the piloting phase? Uh, <laughs> so I'm not really sure uh, about the number, but um, I can say for Germany, we want to do at least three pilotings. And um, at this moment, uh, before the, the summer holidays, we will start in two schools. So we have nearly the half of our aim. But I'm not sure, I'm, I'm really sorry <laughs> uh, that I don't have the numbers for, mm -hmm. for all the other countries. Maybe Marietje, what was your aim? Uh, sure. Well, hello to all first, uh, greetings to all. And um, it is nice to hear uh, the promotion of the Action Project. Uh, firstly, uh, what we have to engage through piloting is to build capacity building on the stakeholders first, mm -hmm. like to target NGOs or, or, or high school teachers or other relevant uh, stakeholders that will after promote open. So uh, in our aim, we have to, uh, to involve um, around uh, 25 uh, person uh, youth workers who will be engaged after uh, to um, implement uh, MOLA or the DigiPack into their da daily work. So the target to the young people might be um, uh, on our local uh, context, I can say about Macedonia, that we will uh, mm -hmm. cover like around 300 young people that will be informed and also included into the activities using OPIN because we will do the trainings for DigiPack first. And for MOLA, we will translate the, the handbook and maybe afterwards we will see how it will be the piloting phase, but DigiPack for sure. Um, it is nice to mention that all of the, the, hand, the both uh, handbooks will be translated also in other languages and they will be available soon on the web page on the on the action uh, project. So yes, I'm inviting all of you to take a look or at least into the English version. It's really nice and detailed uh, tool that uh, could uh, help you into the, the workshop with young people, uh, which is connected with their participation. Okay. Thank you, Mariche. Yeah. Uh, I have um, another question. Yeah, what there was also a question uh, in the chat. Uh, okay, so, let's, let's. Okay, 
Mm-hmm. So um, I would like to answer, uh, can organizations out of the product use this training content? Of course, you're really welcome to do this. But um, I was uh, checking our website and there's a technical problem. <laughs> so um, I can send you the link, but um, at this moment, it is not possible to visit the website. Um, but there you can find our handbook uh, um, at this moment um, in English. You can find uh, find the program and also our materials. So you get a, ha- a handbook with a step by step instruction how to um, do all the activities. So what do you have to prepare? And uh, so everybody is able to do it uh, on her or herself. So yes. So here's the link in the chat. But um, I have to ask our administrator <laughs> to repair this uh, technical problem. Okay, Eva? Um, I have a question on um, um, on the Fire app, actually. Mm-hmm. Is it accessible? Can you have a look at the demo version or something online? Uh, you can only install it on your on your smartphone. So it is, uh, this app is not, a, as far as I know, it is not a, available um, online. Oh, uh, Amy? But there is a, um, a website for the app. So I think you, you can search for it straight in the Google Play Store, but there is a website which um, I've posted in the chat. Oh, that's very nice. Which Thank has you. some information and, yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, this Fire app is also, um, they they want to implement some, some DigiPick content, but uh, it's not um, finished yet. So we are still waiting for it and... They want to implement some new content. Thank you very much. Mm. Uh, my second question is, mm-hmm. what would you say is the biggest advantage of these training modules, uh, both of them, compared to other trainings that are already available in this topic? Mm. Amy, do you want to answer? Well, I wasn't a part of the project during the desk research phase, which which contained a, a, a lot of com- yeah research and comparison on the existing programs. But I would say a big advantage is just that it draws together activities from so many different programs. For example, the Council of Europe has a lot of really great activities and some of those are in there and it's very interactive and um, very flexible so you have like the online and the offline possibilities for implementation which I'm not sure because this was developed like during the pandemic I'm not sure how many how much of a recent development that is that people are thinking about that in developing their training programs so I would say that's at least a, a plus feature, but I can't really say that much about um, how it compares to that many other programs. Mm-hmm. I think um, there's a very big advantage that we have this theoretical p- background. So our colleague is Vettina, who is um, also part of the project. She said there are not many projects who have uh, such a deep theoretical background. So in the first step, we, had, we did this ser- um this uh, desk research and then we we thought about the all the learning objectives and then we check all the activities which um, learning objective is uh, matched with this activity and so on so so we try to combine all these activities with theoretical background so that it is a little bit more safe <laughs> um, yes I think that might be a good advantage yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have another question from Eva. Is the handbook available in other languages? Yes, uh, that's in preparation. So at this moment, it is online in English and German. But um, as Maricha already said, they are also translating. And uh, I'm not sure whether the Bulgarian colleagues also translated uh, the DigiPack program. They will translate uh, the MOLA program. So it depends on our project partners, which uh, training program they want to pilot. So in... Um, I think the Greek partners, they will translate both, Molo and, and uh, um, 
Digipack program and we will uh, publish all handbooks and also the materials on our website as soon as possible. Okay, thank you, Katya. Yeah. I will now, um, any other questions? Please raise your hand or just post your question in the chat. Otherwise, we will go on uh, with the presentation. I will now share again my screen because I have some task for you also. Um, uh, we will have the breakout rooms now or maybe just a joint discussion. Uh, we might separate into groups. Um, Simon, what do you think? Because it would be great uh, if we can discuss on uh, you can talk about how do you, in your work, activate young people to participate online, then how to make civic education more relevant for young people, on your, in your opinion. Then uh, you can also share one example of a digital tool that you use, or you know how to activate young people to participate online. Uh, Simon, do you think it would be possible to um, put the participants into breakout rooms to discuss. I'm, I'm sure you all had nice discussion in the breakout rooms. Um, now we will continue to our last task. I will share my screen. And I would ask you, as in um, every webinar till now, uh, if you could go to the Padlet, I will copy it to the chat. And the link, the, the password is participation. Just it's in the chat, everybody can see. And please, um, in a few minutes, uh, write what did you learn today and what do you want to learn more since we will have uh, the final Open Community Webinar in August. Katja, may I take um, this opportunity to ask you, do you think it would be possible to ask your partner if they could imagine given uh, people um, like perhaps in, in a half an hour um, event in a small online event, a little training and exploration of the Fire app? Yes, I think um, that would be possible. And uh, in our handbook, you can also find some instructions on Fire. Cool. So, um, I can ask Peppa if she can imagine to do that. Yeah, that would be lovely. Perhaps that would be a nice idea um, for the next webinar. And then, do you think, will that be? Anita, did we already have a concrete date? It was definitely in August. Mm, yeah, we said in August because now it's or it's mm -hmm. June and then July. Maybe mm -hmm. we can also <coughs> skip it to July. Um, depends. But um, the idea was in the beginning of August, since August is the okay. final month of OPI mm -hmm. um, DG project. Okay. Yeah, but I we will can adapt. Okay, I will ask her if she's available. So I think what it is important to say about FIRE is that it's uh, more or less for self-studying. So it is not um, not real e-participation. It is more uh, if, if uh, the young people who are already engaged, for example, in an NGO or something like that, um, that they improve their skills regarding um, project communication and some leading skills. Mm -hmm. So it's more or less... Mm -hmm to to do it uh, everybody for itself, her, her herself yes. mm -hmm. but I will ask Pepper and then I can give you feedback well yeah you could, it would be lovely if you could ask her for the first mm -hmm. two weeks of August let's okay. put it that way perhaps yes. we can see about her availability 
Yes. Maybe uh, oh, thank they you. are their holidays, but I don't yeah. ask. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fine. So thank you all for giving your feedback. And uh, I would like to conclude now. So if you have any questions uh, about our project, just write us to community.opin.me. And uh, you can also join, uh, well, join, um, uh, uh, sign up to our newsletter. Uh, I will copy the link in the chat. You can sign up here and you will see uh, also we will send you the invitation to the final of PIN webinar. Uh, it's supposed to be uh, in the beginning of August, but we will inform you about it via mailing. So thank you all for participating today. And uh, thank you, Nexus, Katya, and uh, Amy for your uh, interesting input. And see you all soon. Uh, if you, anybody has any questions, comment. No. No. So no. wish you all. Great. Thank Great you very time. much. See you. Yeah.